Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. In this video, I'm going to take the Lohmann diesel engine apart. This is the 18cc uh, self-igniting two-stroke diesel or multi-fuel engine. Uh, I bought this a while back and I don't know how the, the state of this engine is. So I want to take it completely apart, clean everything up and see what needs to be fixed and what is missing. Because for instance, I have a hard time seeing gaskets some places. So and it needs to be very tight, this engine, to work right. So I'm going to take it all apart and check the piston rings and the ball wear and all that. And then uh, I won't reassemble anything in this video. This will just be taking the Lohmann diesel engine apart. So the first thing I want to remove this is this front plate. And I'm looking forward to doing that because this is different than the other Lohmann diesel engine that I have. This is what controls the adjustable um, compression. Um, these two cables will adjust the sleeve inside of there and, in, and move it in and out. But the piston will still stay in place, so it will change the, uh, the compression. But it's different on this one because it doesn't have a Solena head in the same way as the other one has. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing how this one works. It's very similar to the other system, but on the other system, this one got a slot in it that slits that slides into this, so it doesn't move around. I don't know how, but that is different than this one. Let's just try to adjust it. As you can see, when I push, when I turn the uh, handle, it will spin this one. This one also got some kind of breather. Or maybe overflow, I don't know, right there. The other one doesn't have that either. Oh, so this is very interesting. There we go. This is the inner sleeve. And as you can see, this one, when it spins, it will move this in and out. But this is locked in place by this. Therefore, it will be this part that is moved in and out uh, and changing the compression by doing that. It looks okay in there, at first glance at least. That's... Wow, this one also got a decompression valve down there. Let me just see if I can shine a light down again. That valve in the bottom of this is actually a valve that I can push thereby leaving, letting compression out. So if it's turned all the way to one side, it will actually decompress. And that will actually let the compression out of that little meshed hole I showed you in, uh, previously. So that's interesting because the other Lohmann I had did not have that feature. This can actually decompress when it's turned all the way out. Interesting. Oh well, let's take the dribble around. This right here is the air filter, which is missing a gasket. Not a huge deal, but it won't filter the air very efficiently. I'm not sure it will anyway, but of course it needs to be there if you want the air, if you want the air to actually come through the filter and not through the, uh, the missing gasket right there. Next up is the dribber that is also missing a gasket down here. The, the gasket is going to be very important, so that needs to be fixed. The dribber consists of a needle valve, a needle in there that slides into the inlet for the fuel. So the more it's pulled out, the more fuel will be let in. This is adjustable by that little set screw there, so you can adjust the needle. I know that is to adjust the system for different fuels, because that will also the ratio between air and fuel. So it can be different from different kinds of fuels, of course. So far, everything seems to be there. 
nothing seems to be missing. One thing I th thought was quite strange was that this one is very close to this when it's attached. But it is possible to get a hose on there, so I think it is as it is supposed to be. It's just very tight fit. Um, also, it is slightly movable, so you could put it slightly slanted like that to make a little bit more room. As, as long as everything seals, it wouldn't matter too much. So I think I will do that when it comes time to do that part of it. Next up, I want to remove the exhaust. And yeah, calling this an exhaust is... Well, it is an exhaust because that's the purpose of it, but it is very, very crude. And now I haven't heard this engine run. And the other Lowman that I have is not the same system. This is, I think it's an older system, but I'm not sure because the engine actually seems a little bit more complicated so far because of that uh, decompression thing. Um, this exhaust, as far as I know, well, it looks a little bit, it reminds me of something. Anyway, this exhaust is what gives the uh, old, the Lohmann diesel the nickname Nerve Saw in Germany because it should be really unpleasant to listen to <laughs> because there's not a lot of suppression of the sound. The exhaust will just exit into here. Hey, there's a gasket on this one actually. And then the pressure inside of here will force this to open and then the pressure will just be left, be, be uh, pushed out that way. And as you can imagine, it's not going to be silent. <laughs> But it is showing signs of, a, of charcoal in there, or carbon, I think it's the right name. Of course it is, it's not, it's not made of wood. Uh, so it has been running at some point. That's, that's nice to see. Next up I want to remove the actual Sulena, which is actually not really... I don't know what it's called because it's not the Sulena. The Sulena is over there, or well, the sleeve at least. This is just a container for that sleeve. It's quite fun. There isn't space for a washer back here. It was the same on the other one. There's washers on all the on the studs, but not on the rear one because it's just not possible to get it on then. A problem. Now I'm seeing problems. Mm hmm. What is that? Ah, maybe that's not so bad. There is a roller bearing. Ah, it's a roller bearing for the sleeve to roll in. On the other one, the fit was just very snug. And then it just spun in there. Uh, quite surprising, actually, because it's got to be very heat uh, sensitive. That's very, really interesting. This is very different to the other Lohmann diesel engine that I have. I'm almost tempted to take the other one apart again to show you the inside of that. It's subtle differences, but quite big. Anyway, this is the piston. And I'm very surprised to see two rings on this because everywhere I look, I'm told that this engine is supposed to have three uh, piston rings. But both of the engines that I currently have in my garage got two rings. These rings cost me 25 euros per ring last time I had to order one. These seems to be all right. So I hope I don't have to buy new ones for that. And it is moving really freely and nicely. That's also very nice. Next up, let's remove this. So now I should be able to take half of the crank case off. There's a locating dowel down there. This is another place that the gasket needs to be very tight, so I need to make another one of those. It's very thin. Then a bearing, 
Sounds all right. I could imagine it could be difficult to get these bearings if I need to change them. But I do have a code on it, which is nice. Next up, I want to remove this one. thing about making these videos for you for you guys is that I don't have to take a lot of pictures along the way. I would normally do that but right now I will have a complete video of the disassembling of this which is nice. This is really stuck but it looks like that these this part of it is aluminum and the rest of it is uh, not. So I think I can with a gentle heat, make it a little bigger, but I will have to watch out to not burn the rubber. I don't dare to do anything more than that. But that was enough to take the entire rubber off, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> So that's changeable, that's, that makes sense. But I was expecting to take this part of it off as well. But apparently I did not succeed in that. There we go. Oh, hot. So now that is off. I need to take that little half moon out of here. Because I want that to not disappear. There we go. Now I need to take off all the small balls around the perimeter of the crank casing, I think I would call that. Now I haven't checked if there's oil in this one. Normally I would label a lot of these, but everything seems so obvious. So I don't, so I'm not gonna do it. It's only simple yet very complicated little engine from the really early 50s. I'm actually slightly unsure if there is supposed to be oil in this because there seems to be a connection between, at least on the other one, between the crank casing and the gearbox. So I would assume that it's the diesel oil that gets there. And this is maybe just for draining if it's overflowing. Anyway, there is nothing in this one, at least. Now I think I can separate the two halves somehow. There we go. Ha, <laughs> it smells like an old tape recorder in here. You know, that electrical smell, which is a bit surprising. I need, need to make another gasket for this one. No surprise, all gasket needs to be redone. I think it's some of that greasy stuff that maybe got that smell. I take a look at this, there is not a bearing on this side of the uh, of the engine or the crankshaft. It's just riding in there. Ah, there gotta be a bearing further in. But I actually don't know what to do from here to take it further apart. I don't know how to get to that bearing in there. There's a thread in there, but there was nothing in it. In it. I was actually surprised to see that on the other engine, that there was nothing in the thread. Uh, but it's the same on this one, so it's got to be something to do with disassembling. Maybe it just needs to be pushed off. Okay, so I have decided to try to remove this one to hopefully get some more access to this one. I'm really puzzled about how to get this apart and really trying my best not to be overexcited and do something that breaks it. So I removed the circlip around this one and this one should be able to just be pushed 
out now, as far as I can see at least. So I'm going to do that. So now I think, well, this is loose, but I hope to be able to get it out, but I'm not sure it's possible. Oh, yeah, it is. There we go. This one is out. Just need to tap this the rest. Just need to tap this the rest of the way. These are really tight fits. Oh, fuck. I just wrecked this. That's terrible news. Okay, so I was not careful enough because I have wrecked this one. And also the oil ring in here. This is, I have really tried to find a manual on this engine to do it right, but I, it's not possible. And uh, the problem with this is that it's pretty easy to change now, but getting these parts could be a little bit unobtainium. Like, so that is a big problem actually. Interested in finding out how stuff works. Sometimes you don't do it right. And it becomes a problem. Okay, so it's like two brass rings. That are now wrecked. Of course, it would be possible to make something that will work. Uh, it's just, in theory, it's just a bearing, you know. But still, it's not going to be easy. The problem was that I was supposed to take that sprocket thing out upwards, because this one had that key in it, which of course have wrecked the stuff that it went through. With someone talented, it would be possible to make this kind of bushing on a on a mill. It needs to be lubricated though in the middle. That's why it's in two pieces. Or maybe it's possible to find them. I just don't think so. It still just doesn't tell me how to remove this. I just cannot see any way to do that. And I'm not sure how it's fitted. It's got to be fitted quite snugly because this is the transfer of power from the actual combustion to the to the drive line. So being just a, a a press fit would really surprise me because yeah, it could come loose. But there is no key that I can see, and there is I just don't know. On some exploded views of this engine on the internet, it shows a little screw holding it in place. And other ones does not show that screw, so I just don't know what's the case. And I think I'm going to have to stop here because I am starting to, de to destroy stuff, which was not really the point of this. So I'm going to have to do some more investigating on this. So I'm just continuing on like nothing happened. I'm just ignoring what I broke. Well, actually, I have been done. I have been doing a little bit of research, and the thought occurred, occurred to me that this engine was built built right after World War II. So chances are that these bushings are coming from something else because Lowman was a small, small company. So I don't think they would have made stuff themselves that they could buy elsewhere. So maybe I'm lucky that these can be bought. I found out, for instance, that the bearing on the crankshaft got a number stamped on it, stamped on it, and that is readily available from other places. So that's not a specific Lowman part. This one could be specific Lowman, but I hope not. Then I did some more research and found a picture on the internet. And actually, because it's a really rare engine, of course there will be a workshop manual somewhere, but I don't have it, and I can't find it. But I found an auction site with a picture of the crankshaft with this part removed. And it turns out that there is a thread in this one. And it's a reverse thread, that's one thing. And it's out here. So what I have done is this. I have clamped 
the crankshaft and the vise very carefully. You notice that the piston, uh, that the piston uh, is not clamped. Then I have taken this oil wrench to uh, grab on that that is made to grab on to oil filters, and with that, I'm turning it, <coughs> and it took a lot of force. But as you can see, it is now spinning. There must be a special tool for this because, as you can see, I did wreck it a little bit up here um, because this is a round piece and I grabbed it with the, uh, with the wrench right there. But notice something on the picture I found on the internet. I don't seem to be the only guy who did that <laughs> because that one also got damages on the side. But if I had not found this picture, I would have never got this piece off without destroying something, that's for sure. It's a nice piece. So this is it. The Lohmann diesel is in pieces now. Everything looks pretty decent in here, to be honest. The worst thing is something I did myself. I'm going to attempt to measure these and then just try to Google around because, as mentioned, I have a feeling that these are not made only for the Lohmann. I think the Lohmann company would have bought stuff like this from other companies because it was a very small company. This is the only problem that I really have to deal with. The rest of it is just cleaning, reassembling, making new gaskets and all that. And uh, I'm going to clean it up before assembling it. I would also like to fix up this cover because it's supposed to be red in between this. You can see there is still some red paint left there, but not a lot. I would like to freshen up that a bit. There is also a problem on this one where the wheel has been grinding away on the casing. It's pretty close to being... It's very thin in this area, so maybe I would have to use some filler of some kind to make sure that it doesn't break completely. I don't know if I can just JB weld it or Maybe it's time to actually get a tick welder so I can aluminum weld it up and grind it down. I don't know. That could be a fun thing also. The Lohmann diesel engine is apart. Now I know how it looks on the inside. I was really looking forward to this uh, part of the journey because I have taken the Lohmann diesel engine apart before, but it's not the same. And this is very different, especially the, especially, or well, actually only the uh, cylinder and the and the sleeve is different than this one. But that is also very different, so uh, yeah, exciting. The rest of it seems fine. The piston ring on the top one is a bit stiff. I think I can just clean that up. As you can see, the top one is not that springy anymore. So it's not, it's not, it's not expanding as much as the lower one. Uh, I might end up buying two new piston rings for it, even though it's very expensive. Um, anyway, the rest of the piston seems fine and the bearing and all that seems fine. I do have some scoring marks on it that indicates a little bit of a overheat at some point, but it's not, it's almost not feelable, so I'm not worried about it. And all in all, it actually seems to be in very good condition, all this, so that's really nice. Next video on this one will be cleaning up and uh, starting to reassembling it. I think it will take a while because I need to find those bushing before I can do that. So don't expect it anytime soon. One day it will come. So uh, yeah, see you in the next one.